Jo, wir kommen zurück auf der Dauerwerbesendung äh, zu der Dauerwerbesendung für 1.9.2.7.134. Wir schauen mal wieder ein Video hier über Softwarelizenzen. Jetzt sind wir echt bald durch mit meiner äh, Softwarelizenzen-Playlist, die ich mir hier zusammengeklickt habe und ähm, haben dann wirklich jedes Softwarelizenzen-Video unter der Creative Commons gesehen. Und ah, by the way, das ist Folge 100 und ich denke, wir werden selbst in Folge 100 immer noch nicht dieses das Goldfarm-Projekt fertigstellen, aber das, das werden wir ja mal sehen. Okay, ähm, ja, dann würde ich sagen, let's go mit dem Video von dem Flourish Conference Channel. Das ist ein Video mit 38 Aufrufen von 2013 und es trägt den Titel Is Software Licensing Still Relevant? Flourish 2011. Also ich nehme an, das ist ein, ja, ein Event von 2011 gewesen, Wurde aber erst in 2013 hochgeladen. Wir haben schon 2020. Also mal sehen, wie relevant dieses Video über Relevanz von 2011 ist. Ähm, ein Vortrag von Edward Swiderski. Okay, keine Ahnung, wie man das aus ausspricht. <lacht> Würde ich sagen, let's go. Link zum Video ist wie immer in der Beschreibung, genauso wie die IP-Adresse zu diesem Microsoft-Server. Und irgendwie, ich war die ganze Zeit beim äh, letzten Upload. Ähm, Ah ja, ja, ist der Ton hart. Also ich habe mal ein bisschen reingehört, ich glaube der Ton wird noch ein bisschen besser. Ähm, war ich hier auf K und habe die Dinger hier ein bisschen versucht zu dingseln und das hat ja irgendwie gar nicht geklappt. Also diese Eier, ich weiß nicht wie lange das dauert, bis die mal hier durchkommen, aber boy. Ähm, ich glaube Schildkröten vermehren ist nicht so und ich wüsste auch gar nicht, wo ich dann diese Eier lagern sollte. Aber ja, wir brauchen ja eben nur eigentlich ein Ei. Und deswegen, naja, mal sehen, werde ich wahrscheinlich hier die alle abfarmen und dann einfach abhauen hier. Und ja, die werde ich ja wohl kaum im Slot dafür in der Enderchest verwenden. Naja, wir werden es sehen. Okay. Chillin' Hall, 
was on uh, was on uh, Regis and Kelly, and he defined the Oops, source solid. code as being a computer program that enters your body. What? So that to me uh, is is powerful. That's a powerful statement. I would love to hear more from Jake Chillen on his on his topic. So. On the oh, you can release of yeah. the source code. Uh, I'm happy to be here today. So, anybody gonna see it? All right, all right. Yeah, I don't know if Jake knows that much about open source or source code, but whatever. Um, so, another little fact about me: I was on uh, a TV show called The Bachelorette. I was actually the guy that, that she she picked um, to, Ooh, uh, to the get flex. Engaged. Kind of a shocking thing, but you can see how I was ahead of Jake, and I wanted to get Tux out there. So I had my, my tattoo of Tux there and I, I brought a little coffee cup. Is it funny? She didn't even know what that was. But, uh. <laughs> Here we go. So, um, again, licensing is, uh, I think it, it kind of flares a, a very good conversation. Um, historically, I think it's it was uh, much more relevant than it is today. And I, I think that's a challenging statement for all of you guys. I'd like to get your feedback on it. Um, <laughs> But you can see that it has definitely ignited debate in the past, and, and there's been uh, controversy and, and major lawsuits involved with it. Um, so here's a statement from Steve Ballmer. Uh, Linux is a cancer that attaches itself in an intellectual property sense to everything it touches. Wow. That's another that's another powerful thing. And actually, I'd, I've met Steve Ballmer. I've worked with him. I've worked with Bill Gates. Um, and they're not bad guys. They actually, uh, they're, they're not bad guys, but that's a powerful statement. And uh, I, I really don't know if it applies um, at all. So um, I want to I want to spend a few minutes just to go through my kind of perspective on on uh, open source floss versus commercial software. And uh, again, I'm not an expert. That's why we have people like uh, Dahlia Saber, who runs her own law firm on IP. Um, but I definitely would like to get your guys' feedback on it too. So um, so quick uh, quick background. So commercial software. Monopolistic, opportunistic, um, you know, very uh, kind of lagging in innovation, a necessity, uh, pervasive, generally understood from a, from a cost perspective. Uh, you build the software, you sell it, you make money. Um, makes sense, right? Open source uh, definitely promotes innovation. Um, organizations like Flourish, obviously, it, we're spreading the the good the. the uh, wisdom of open source and the gospel. Oh, he is. Uh, it's free, sound. and it's free, as in freedom. Um, it's uh, it's a bit taboo still, I think, in business uh, up until recently, and it's certainly misunderstood. I think from a licensing perspective, there's a lot of uh, confusion out there. Uh, there's a, there's a bit of an identity identity crisis too with um, you know, GPL and other. Uh, uh, variants of open source licensing and and, uh, and so uh, I think that traditionally it's just been a, it's been an easy road for commercial software so if we look at uh, a little bit deeper into commercial licensing um, again you know it re represents America right capitalism um, look at we've got an aerial there at Bill Gates's house uh, it's on Lake Washington not not bad um, makes people rich Keep software convoluted and confusing. So this is a uh, this is a statement that I think is is kind of important in uh, in the history of commercial software because the more confusing it is for an organization or an individual to understand what they're using as an as an information worker, I think uh, it keeps uh, it keeps more value in the software. So I don't know if that makes sense, but maybe maybe it does. I don't know. Um, and I think of, of open source as sort of the opposite, right? But the real problem has been challenges in history. So you've got, you know, major groups on the open source uh, side of the house that are disagreeing on certain standards and uh, goals, right? So why are we here? Why are we fighting for freedom in software? And, you know, so uh, I think there's been definitely a weak marketing uh, engine, which Maybe that's something that's deliberate, right? Maybe we don't want a massive marketing engine for, for, for open source. We want to keep it community-based and, and non-corporate. Um, I think it's, there's confusion, certainly, in, in the different houses and in different distributions of not just Linux, but every other variant of an open source uh, <clears throat> tool. Um, in, the, in the history of open source, I think there hasn't been an, a real good business model. Um, you know, Red Hat might be 
an organization that uh, historically has been, has been very well at uh, has done very well at, at generating revenue and services and uh, also building upon a, a solid platform in a commercial environment and in an enterprise environment. Um, but other than that, I don't think there's really been too much success within the past you know ten years. Uh, Prior to the past five years, I would say I don't think there, there really was, unless anybody has an example of someone. Um, just a little fact here: so, open source software claims to have saved sixty billion dollars in uh, in software per year for consumers. Now, um, I would love for that to be, uh, you know, from from Ubuntu being distributed, you know, on. Uh, ich frage mich ja, wie diese äh, Eier wachsen, ob die auch eine gewisse Bedingung brauchen oder ob die vielleicht nur im Sand wachsen, weil ich habe echt Angst, dass da eine Schildkröte schlüpft, wenn ich jetzt irgendwas nicht bedenke, wenn ich, äh, wenn ich dieses Ei jetzt da hinsetze. Aber mal sehen, das wird schon klappen. Ich habe ja ein paar Ersatzeier. Online, but uh, I don't think that's the cause of it. I think it's obviously the, the web server side and, and the lamp stack. Um, so just a little, little fact there that uh, not many people actually know about. That are non-technical, I should say. So if we, we fast forward to today, I think um, we're starting to see these these lines kind of come together, right? So uh, today commercial being software is certainly getting no? <laughs> more innovative. It's getting more communal, um, certainly more more relaxed from a, a cost perspective. Uh, you know, I came from Microsoft, so uh, you know, I typically would work with my customers. Although I wasn't selling Microsoft services, or I wasn't selling Microsoft software. I was selling Microsoft services, so um, you know my my licensing counterpart would come to me once a year, and, and guess when that time was? It was you know during the renewal time for my customer, so um, you know that was a necessity, right? You have to renew your software. So um, that said, I think recently the the, the cost model and the uh, the whole SKU model of of commercial software is changing, um, and that's part of the the cloud kind of the advent of the, the cloud and, and, uh, and software as a service. But, so the model's changing. Um, on the uh, GPL and the, and the open source side, I think, you know, it's not much has changed, but it's certainly more acceptable in the business community. Um, you know, it's becoming more ubiquitous. Still a little bit confusing, uh, but it's getting better. And uh, does anybody have any, any comments on any of that? I mean, I, do you guys agree that that's happening or... What are you seeing out there? Just anything. Sure. Oh God, is this Liza? That's a, that's, a, that's a very good point. So the philosophy is, I I interchange. Um, I'm going to interchange this, those two in the in the talk because. You know, it's easy to uh, it's easy to connect open source software with open source licensing, right? There's just a clear connection there. Um, but there's certainly more behind uh, openness and and, free, and floss. And um, so the free side of it is obviously different from the freedom side of it and the philosophy side of it, the methodologies. Um, and I want to get into that a little bit more. So that's a good point. And uh, so so good. Any, anything else? You guys feel 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 okay to just jump in anytime. Sure. Okay, die Frage ist, ist das Teil jetzt schon fertig, so wie es ist? Man weiß es nicht. Also sitzt hier um, alles, da sind Creeper. Muss da eigentlich noch Wasser hin? So oh, nein, nein, uh, nein, nein. Open, open document formats more for, for du! Kind of a good translation. Um, I don't know. You know, I'm... <laughs> I don't know. I use Open Office, you know, and I'm using Google Office. I'm using uh, Google Apps, and you know, I I've been using Ubuntu for years now, you know, and I, I don't have Windows. I mean, I, I don't know. I guess all my friends uh, are using Google Apps now, and I don't think it really matters now. 
that's a new generation. I think that the generations before us are, you know, are going to have, are still having issues with it, right? Um, but I think it's just going to be a natural uh, a movement, you know, and it's it's happening already. All right. So commercial software. Um, before I left Microsoft, uh, you know, I was part of the, the VPOS group. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but it's a it's the cloud and uh, Azure group. So. Um, you know, they they certainly have a different perspective than the conventional, uh, more conventional groups at, at Microsoft, and uh, certainly are more open to, you know, connectivity and integration, obviously with the cloud uh, model. So there's growth and interoperability. Um, there's good integration there. It's not making as many people rich, uh, but they certainly are getting a little more warmer. You can see there with the kids starting to open up a little bit there. Um, on the open source side. Now this is uh, this is interesting to me because you know you've got all these major major companies that are exploding overnight, and the majority of them are being built on open platforms. Uh, but who knows that? No, nobody knows that but us. You know, I mean, really. Uh, you know, Twitter didn't didn't uh, announce or you know publicly make it known that. You know, they, they started on, it was WordPress they started out on, I think. Ruby on um, Rails, so oder? A, you know, obvious message auch open source. from them, but you know, people didn't care. I think that's that's the idea. They don't they don't really care what it's built on, right? As long as it works and does what they want it to do. Um, but, like I said, it's it's definitely fueling, you know, success. Um, it's not making a ton of people rich immediately. Uh, as you can see, there my house over at Halstead. Um, but... A thing that I do want to talk about a little bit is the, the dual licensing models. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but uh, so Sugar CRM is, is a good example of that, where they've got uh, you know, this, this open community-based version, and then you've got various other versions. You've got the enterprise and the business versions of those two. Does anybody have That's any experience working with them uh, at a business level and sort of transitioning <coughs> from that community based version of, of a platform, any any platform, to a more commercialized uh, variant license. Nobody's uh, worked with like, like Sugar CRM or uh, any of the other, uh, like Alfresco or any of those guys. Nothing? All right. Crickets. <laughs> well, to me, I think it's an interesting model because it really does contradict, uh, in my opinion, uh, the, whole, the whole philosophy of open source. And uh, you know, I've worked with platforms like Sugar, and uh, it's it's been challenging to make that to make that uh, change from one model to the next because you've got all these intellectual property issues you've got to work with that um, you know not very easy to work with. So, so my point is is I think that the, the lines are blurring. Um, you know, open source is, is certainly has a little more of a, of a commercial. Uh, I don't want to say uh, model, but it has capabilities, right? And and commercial software is becoming much more open. And you've got Miley here in, in Hannah, Montana. <laughs> so here's a, the, the philosophical uh, approach that, that I think you brought up back there. Um, you know, it's this uh, beer versus uh, free beer. Free is in free is in free beer. No, sorry. Free is in free speech, not as in free beer. <laughs> Is everybody familiar with that term? Raise your hand if you've heard that before. Who who's who who coined that term? I think I've got it up there. Yeah. All right. So uh, Richard Solomon, you know, he's a big advocate of the whole free software uh, movement, right? Floss, um, Foss, uh, in, in the gratis versus libre uh, movement. So um, I think to me, when I think of is licensing still relevant? I, I look at licensing and, and I interchange that with open source and open source life licensing and think, well, I don't believe that that, uh, that the philosophy behind it will ever go away, right? But I think that the model in the, in the, uh, the gratis versus libre uh, perspective is, uh, is interesting. I mean, does anybody have any comments on this at all in, in, in kind of uh, just, uh, you know, have you read anything on it or do you guys have any feedback on it? Um, you know, this this whole perspective. Sure. Das ist ein bisschen leise, Leute. Apple 
is leading a charge to dismantle the, the, the GNU project? Okay. Yeah, no, please. Ach, hier ist es leise. Okay, ich muss mal kurz wieder mh, das andere Video hier machen, weil ich wirklich alles kaputt gemacht habe. Das ist natürlich echt ungünstig gewesen. Nice, bekommen wir ja für Microsoft Office. Soll da wirklich kein Wasser sonst mehr hin? Das wundert mich halt, oder? Soll da noch was hin? Schilder brauche ich ja auch noch, also gib mir echt das Holz aus hier. Unbelievable. Hier ist halt auch nicht wirklich Holz da. Und hier werden auch Dinge gewesen, ja, okay. Scheiße. Also hier kommen ein paar Schilder hin in welche Richtung? Haha. Ah doch, da kommt tatsächlich schon Wasser hin. Ich hatte nur keins gesetzt, weil... LOL. Okay, also kommen auf die Höhe Schilder hin. Und hier ist wahrscheinlich auch ein Stein weggeflogen, oder? Äh. Ich weiß nicht, oder war das offen? I don't know. Okay, also kommt auf jeden Fall überall hier Wasser hin. Ja, gut, Minecraft. Tolles Game. Okay, so. Ich denke, das passt dann. Ja, yeah, oh, absolut. Das ist ein sehr guter Punkt. Ein bisschen kämpft der Server schon, oder? Oder bin das ich? Ja, well, go ahead. Das kann natürlich auch mein Internet sein, das weiß ich jetzt nicht. Aber... <lacht> Schrei lauter bitte, mein Junge.
does it does it matter, right? So, because Apple's leading that charge, um, you know, you're going to have a bazillion people that are that are going to follow them, and unless they really believe in the open philosophy, then they're going to jump on board with them, right? I don't know. It's I, I think it's a very valid statement. Um, it's scary, but I'm not a Mac user, so beat it. <laughs> Um, so that whole, I think that whole debate is, is fun to talk about. Um, you know, it's, it, I read about it a lot and I'm really fascinated with it. I'm certainly not an expert though. Um, so if you guys have any other comments on it, I think it's a, it's an interesting dialogue. So, um, again, to kind of keep this, this conversation going here, you know, does it, does it, co does, does cost matter anymore, right? So since we get everything for free or, um, you know, $9.99 a month to start out with, right? And I'm speaking more on a consumer consumer level, um, but even on the enterprise level now, I mean, you can get, get a lot of products for under 100 bucks a user. Um, does anybody care whether or not it's it's open? You know, I mean, if, if we're all using APIs now to connect to these services, you know, who cares if it's open, right? I don't know. I think it's, uh, um, you know, and according yeah, so to the average personal. information user, they still think that, I mean, I'll, I'll explain to my friends that, you know, I use an operating system that I didn't pay for, right? And and I customize it, and I build it exactly how I like it, and they just cannot grasp it. Even my most technical friends, <coughs> they, they really don't understand it because they're not, you know, they're kind of not um, in the technology realm, I guess. Yeah. So it's definitely still a, still a challenge out there. Um, Ich habe eine Eid zertreten. Gut, dass ich mehrere dabei habe. Leute. Ich bräuchte hier wahrscheinlich auch noch eine Tür. Are we just going to be signing EULAs for our subscription to Twitter? You know, I, I don't know. Um, what do you guys think? I mean, is this something that's that's accurate, or, or is this? What are you guys seeing out there? Sure. Das ist ja ziemlich interaktiv. I have this this vision of, you know, five, ten years from now of not far from what you what you just said. I'm sorry, what was your name? Chris. Um, I envision, you know, everyone having their own server, right? Whether it's in their house or, or you know, in a host environment, but it's theirs. And it's their platform. It's theirs to customize. Um, everyone has their own domain name. It, it might be issued by you know, some agency. I don't know um, what that would look like, but I think that that's, that might be a direction that we go. It's, it's a little extreme, um, given the commercial and enterprise uh, force behind cloud computing right now. I think, um, you know, it's it's going to be tough to determine which direction we'll go in. You know, we're going to keep going in this, in this, you know, centralized platform or cloud cloud computing, whatever marketing term we want to call it. Um, is it we're going to keep going that direction? I think there's a lot of force and money behind that right now. Um, I don't know if everyone's prepared to go and have their own server. I'd love, I'd love it. I think it'd, think it'd be great. Um, so that's kind of the backdrop, the backdrop of, of why I wanted to talk today is really just to kind of, you know, bring, is is it really valid anymore? Is software is licensing valid? Period. Um, so this is kind of a, a mix between my opinion and uh, just some things that I've I've uncovered over the past couple of years, but uh, I do believe that open source is uh, definitely the future of software. But with the cloud, I think that you know all these years we've been we've been saying you know this is the year of Linux. This is it. You know the desktop is here now. Goodbye Windows. And uh, <laughs> and now it's like you know I feel like we're missing our chance because the desktop will be dead. And um, and that was sort of the flagship, as much as we we all know it's not. 
that's the face of open source is, is the desktop, right? Linux and, and distribution. That, that is the um, quote unquote, you know, face of all open source now. We know there's much more behind it, but um, you know, so are, is the window of opportunity for open source to shine, quote unquote, is that, you know, is, is it past? Um, and did we ever want it to be uh, this, this uh, celebrity operating system? You know, I, I don't know, or software or, you know, any, any platform at all. Um, being at a, a large, you know, corporation, a big software company, I know the commercial software is is experience is experiencing hardship right now with the adoption of cloud even if they even if you have a kurz auf die server auslastung schauen diese Minecraft Legs hier nicht in meiner CPU Auslastung wiederfinden. Ähm, ja, also irgendwann <lacht> momentan geht es ja alles noch und mal besser, mal weniger besser, aber also wenn das jetzt hier so ein Dauerzustand bleibt oder sich also eigentlich nur wenn es sich verschlimmert ähm, und ich mir sicher bin, dass es am Server liegt, dann werde ich hier noch mal ein bisschen weiter investigieren und äh, ja, damit die Stabilität hier ein bisschen. Also ich meine, wir haben ja nur vier Spieler online hier wenn dann mal mehr Spieler hier online sein sollten, die auch dann willentlich versuchen, den Server Alarm zu legen, da muss der schon ein bisschen mehr aushalten können. Aber ja. Our model is still being challenged because uh, you know that that desktop client that uh, you've been getting, you know, the, this annual revenue from every year now is going away. So certainly, uh, commercial licensing is seeing a major impact there. Does anybody work at a software company, or what are you guys' backgrounds? I'm just curious. Students, um, what do we got here? How about you, bud? Hard hardware hacking. Okay. Um, so, uh, what's your experience working with open source and hardware? Because I know that's that's a debatable uh, topic too. Good. That's that's interesting. I just read about it too. Uh, the open source hardware initiative. Source and open platforms and free software 
I think is, is moving into other realms, right? So I think it, we're seeing this in, obviously in crowdsourcing is, is a huge, huge initiative and in content and skill. Uh, you know, we use crowdsourcing tools all the time. And I think Linux, the Penguin, Tux is right there in the back of the room. Everybody just give them a quick wave. Hey there, all right. Come on in, come up on stage. That's right. Our, uh, our own hero here, look at this. Sind jetzt los? Oh mein Gott. Ich kann dir ja vorstellen, dass der immer als Pinguin verkleidet. Ach du Scheiße. Wie gerne ist das denn? Was ist mit den Loten? Take it easy. Wow. Celebrity sighting right here. Alright. Um, so. Again, I think that we're seeing this this open philosophy move into other areas of our world. You know, I think it's carrying on to the generation that's that's growing up right now. Um, I think you know, I work with up my my alma mater quite a bit, Michigan State, and you know, the open software is a part of the curriculum now. I mean, that was never a part of it when I was there, and it was a, it's a total change in mentality. I think so. I like it. I think it's it's positive and it's good. Um, I think that we're going to continue to see this, you know, cloud, node, uh, you know, platform to continue to move forward. Uh, as much as I'd like to see the personal, uh, you know, web server in our in our living rooms, um, in in traditional licensing will be irrelevant. I think someday. But again, I think the pillars of of open source, the flexibility, the, uh, you know, interoperability, uh, localization, all these things Wasn't are. Any time? You know, part of the, the growth behind it, and I don't think that's something that will ever go away. I think that's something that's going to continue on in software, and in continue to influence. I think more in commercial software. Um, again, really, this is more about uh, the generation that's coming up. Continued tsunami. I don't know. It might be a little too early to use that word. Sorry. Um, but you guys understand what I'm, what I'm getting at here. This crowdsourcing movement and, and find, using the community to, to solve problems and knowing that just one mind is uh, is a limited approach to, to solving problems. Um, and then again, this new generation is is uh, you know they're kind of grown up with it. So. That said, uh, I want to get some dialogue going. I mean, I know we, we have some time left, so I want to uh, really just kind of get you guys' feedback on what you, how you feel about this topic, because I certainly did not cover this thing from soup to nuts, but um, hopefully I kind of you know brought some ideas up and, and uh, generated some, some thoughts on what's going to be Sigmund in the future of, of licensing. What do you guys think? <clears throat> Right, so anything you get for free is, uh, you know, it's too good to be true, right? Um, I don't know how to solve that problem. I, I just tell them that it's better. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I say, look, um, you know, do you like using Windows? Do you like using your Mac? Yeah, mostly they say yes to Mac. Um, mostly they but, say yes uh, to Windows as well. I think it's just too, they just don't get it, right? Like I said, it's, it goes back to the, the roots of, of Americanism, I think, and, and uh being able to capitalize on, on creating something, you know, and people just generally just don't understand it. And again, I think it's a generational thing. I think most people under 30 years old probably get that pretty easily. Um, 30 to 40, you know, I don't know, um, somewhat. Uh, but even, I mean, I've got some older friends that, that get it totally. You know, I've got a, a very good friend. He's 70 years old and he is a huge advocate of, of open source. So, and he's not Richard Stallman. But that's it's a great question. I mean, how do you provide value for it? So, you know, I think you can say, um, well, from our perspective, we we are very very candid and transparent about when we build software for our customers, we're using open platforms, right? And they do not cost us a dime. Now, they we're more than happy to build them software 
out of the box exactly how they like it for a very small fee. But when it comes to customizing it and making it their own, then um, you know I think that's where that's where the opportunity lies, right? For, for especially for consulting firms, um, I think that product companies are are going away. I mean they're they're disappearing, and everyone's moving to a uh, a service oriented program, not just a SOA. I mean from a product perspective, um, you know so. I think it's more going to—it's going to be more around service management and being able to help uh, from a consulting perspective to help your customers um, achieve really what they need with a, with a tailored solution. But for our friends that don't, you know, that are accountants, uh, forget it. <laughs> what else, guys? Ich habe noch irgendwo so einen Schalter hier, oder? Finde jetzt mehr oder weniger Schaden? Ich meine, XP Farm ist ja auch ganz nett und so, aber. Um, net neutrality is. Uh, I'm not sure what to think about it. I, you know, I don't. I'm not very learned on the topic, to be honest. Um, but I know that it's not something I want coming. Um, inevitably, I think it probably will, or it may even, you know, I, I don't know. Is it? Is it Is it already approved? Like, is this thing happening or what? I don't know. Not who knows, but it probably will. It's been brought up, you know, multiple times within uh, government, and it's concerning. But um, I don't know. It's another revenue model for for you know a major corporation, right? I think the I think the pipes should be free, but you know, the subway isn't. So, well, what what's your opinion on it? So you mean the telco com telco companies, right? So that's going to be the way for them to uh, to compensate for the, the loss of right, and they and they get the politicians who have no idea what they're doing to uh, to agree to it. Yeah, that is a well. I mean, there's a there's a lot of advocacy out there to prevent that. Uh, hopefully, that uh, there's enough. But you know, I, I personally, I know I've signed several uh, online, um, I don't know what the hell. yeah, yeah, and uh, these petitions that are going around, and, and I don't know if they're effective or not. But uh, you know, I, I, can cer I certainly haven't seen any, any change in my bandwidth prices yet. So hopefully we don't. <laughs> what uh, what else, guys? What, Anything else about you know licensing? You guys are you guys just came in. Are you guys? Uh, what's your background? Okay. Are you here for the licensing talk, or are you just okay? Cool. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about kind of commercial versus open source licensing. You guys have any opinion on um, I guess the future and what you see? Uh, even from a development perspective, do you see uh, you know this this software as a service model, cloud model? Interfering with open source's future, and, and, and more importantly, the licensing aspect of open source. Kind of an open-ended question, but you know. Okay, jetzt sterben wir auf jeden Fall, ne? Oh, okay, also das. Äh, <coughs> da muss definitiv eine größere Kiste hin. That's for sure. Das ist noch keine Doppelkiste, ne? Yeah. Right, ich so muss hier eh ein riesiges Kistenlager hin und die ganzen und den ganzen Kram matter. hier. The API is just as robust as a, you know, for a .NET service as it is for a, you know, PHP or Ruby or you know, any other platform out there. It's it's almost like, well, we don't have real true root access. I mean, we could. Um, do we want it? I don't know. I don't think so. If they, they've got the servers updated and everything's secured. Um, that's that's right. So, um, well, if they don't, that's illegal. But <laughs> you know, uh, but that's 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 true. Yeah. So uh, security is a big big part of that. And, you know, these big software companies have gone out of their way to make sure the cloud platforms are secure um, because there's been this huge. You know, pushback from corporations and governments that uh, they don't believe that cloud computing is secure. And, you know, 
the truth is it's probably more, 100 more times secure than their own platforms. But you know. um, what else? Anybody else have any interesting uh, ideas? <laughs> I think there might be a couple of, of forks, maybe, and, and would people move? I don't think so, no. I mean, why would they? You know, why change? It's like, you know, if your car you know, is running good, why, uh, why move to another yeah, car? Or why buy a house? You have to have friends on the other platform. Um, also. It, there'd have to be a compelling reason to move. Sogar wenn es besser wäre, würde niemand durch den Struggle gehen und seinen Account nochmal erstellen und alles nochmal neu posten. provide a, a, a more open API, is that? Right, there's the Facebook markup language. Yeah. Is everybody, does anybody use the FBML? It's pretty limited, but whatever. You can, you can build a login on your website. Drupal has a plugin for it. Uh, there's one behind you. So you think opening it up would, would improve the experience because of the community, you know, fixing bugs or, or making it more robust? I, yeah, I think I think it's possible, definitely. So that's a different angle, though, right? So you're you're saying Stimmt. let's Facebook use könnte echt the community das to solve our problems. Here's yes, the, here's the platform super effective for us. Natürlich nicht, I think that's, aber that's probably something that's find the problems. Denk yeah. ein paar Leute hätten auch ein bisschen um, mehr Vertrauen build, und uh, you know, sagen wir mal Schmächbuck or whatever it is. <laughs> Ein bisschen mehr äh, Lust einfach Facebook zu verwenden, wenn es Open Source wäre. Und äh, an sich, naja, wenn ja trotzdem noch konkurrenzlos. Ja, krass. Ja gut, 2011, also mittlerweile verwendet eh keiner mehr Facebook halt auch von Instagram Open Source gehen würde oder so, ne? The next social network, whatever it is. Uh, there's one in the back, I'll come right back up. Go ahead. services too, like Twitter, right? 
so last week they announced that they were going to start to close down their API a little bit. Right? They're not going to make it as open. They're, they're, and a lot of people are pissed because they built a lot of applications around those, and now they're going to block them, and they're going to do their own thing. They want their own apps. Um, so, does anybody listen to Twit? Or listen to Leo, Leo Laporte? Alright, so, um, you guys listened last week about the, and he, he talked about it a little bit. He had, uh, I forget who he had on, but, you know, it's, I think these, these big companies are getting a little more greedy. Um, you know, so, uh, the open, the open, the open mentality, uh, maybe pulling back a little bit. I, The Twitter thing was, was a, there was an uproar, you know, in the community. And uh, so even like, uh, you know, there's an app out there, a web app, uh, Sprout Social. I don't know if you guys would use that. It's a local local company. They're over in the Grimmont building. Um, it's got some friends over there. And, you know, they, that's a big part of the platform is to be able to use and monitor Twitter from your account to do more of, a, of an enterprise management of your social media, but um, particularly for, for customers or for an enterprise social media manager. Um, but that is going to have a major impact on, uh, on Sprout Social, right? Because that's like half of their platform. Um, so I'm not sure what they're thinking. Maybe they're just getting a little more green. They're seeing that uh, you know, this open model maybe isn't the, the, is lucrative enough. I, I don't know. Example of a good revenue model for open, in, in the open source world. Um, well, so I talked about people talk about it, but Red Hat obviously was is is like the only enterprise that's ever really um, kind of embraced open source and built a built a company on it that's somewhat successful. Um, you know, in, in the majority of that is, is services, right? I don't think they make a lot of money on their on their uh, their enterprise server is definitely. Shifting, right? So even at Microsoft, um, you know, this, the, the notion of having a services group within Microsoft, where I was, I was a part of you guys must have been. Um, I covered the, the consulting side for Microsoft's government consulting, and um, you know, there was a, it was sort of like this battle between the product side and the services side, right? Because a lot of the services could accomplish the same thing as a product could, right? Or potentially less or more. It was a custom solution. So the revenue model, um, you know, that's not open source, obviously, but the revenue model, I think, is in, is in services um, in, in really helping organizations adapt and modify platforms. I don't think, you know, selling, I don't think there's any model in selling open source software. That's, I mean, just inherently that it's not, I don't think that's what it was really ever meant for. Does that kind of, kind of answer your question? <laughs> Um, I don't know. We have two minutes left. Does anybody have a, a last comment? Uh, anything in general? Just what, what you think? What's the future? What are we going to have to deal with uh, five years from now?
the GPL would go to a, uh, a cloud EULA kind of environment. Is that? So the legend is Das war ein 2011-Talk über die Future von Software-Licensing oder über die Frage, ob es noch relevant ist. Ähm, Link zum Video ist wie immer in der Beschreibung, äh, sowie die IP-Adresse oder auch die Domain zu diesem Server hier, äh, zu diesem Minecraft-Server. Ähm, genau. Und irgendwie habe ich das Gefühl, dass die Goldfarm doch ein bisschen an der Performance von dem Server zehrt. Ich muss mal schauen ob ich den Server irgendwie stabiler machen kann. Ähm, ich werde jetzt direkt mal was probieren und dann werden wir in der nächsten Folge sehen, ähm, ja, was ich so geschafft habe. Ne? Folge 100, äh, doch noch geschafft, die Goldfarm fertig zu bauen. Das ist doch schon mal ein, eine schöne Errungenschaft. Okay, ja, dann äh, würde ich sagen, sehen wir uns in der nächsten Folge wieder. Und äh, schaut doch mal bitte auf dem Server vorbei. Und ach ja, und schaut unbedingt bei dem Video vorbei, was wir angeschaut haben. Gebt dem mal einen Klick, einen Kommentar und ein Like, weil, naja, wir das hier einfach so geschaut haben, ohne, naja, <lacht> ihr das hier einfach über mich geschaut habt, ohne dieses Video zu ehren. Ähm ja, Leute, ne? so viel dazu. Dann sehen wir uns in der nächsten Folge.